fandom culture is not known for being tame. When I was 11, I joined the MLP fandom, you know, the, the brony fandom, and stayed there for a couple years. During my time in that community, I somehow stumbled across a very small sub community called Hypnoponies, a community that had its own dedicated forum dedicated to the idea of hypnotizing yourself to become a pony to solve all of your life's problems. Their site slogan was finding ourselves by becoming others. Like to me, that does not sound good. They wanted to hypnotize themselves to not only physically feel like a pony, like a like a horn or wings or hooves or something. Um, <laughs> don't know why I did that. I should delete my channel. They also hypnotized themselves to take on the main personality traits of these characters. You know, there's the six main characters called the main six. There's Twilight Sparkle, she's the studious one. Rainbow Dash is a bit of the athletic risk taker. And Pinkie Pie is, um, we don't talk about Pinkie Pie. <laughs> The idea was to override who you were to become a literal fictional horse. All you have to do is speak one little phrase. I'm a smart pony. You will feel every change I described here return to the surface, changing you back into the smart little pony from the person you were. The forums had thousands of members, and the people in this community would sort of cross-post and talk about their experiences on other My Little Pony-related forums. I have to come clean, you guys. While I was 11, I was also a really dumb 11-year-old, okay? Intelligence abandoned me, so when I found this group at the age of 11, I listened to their hypnosis files. I was not that bright, okay? I wasn't. So, um, in this video, we're gonna look at what this community was like and just really get to the bottom of what was going on here, you know? What transpired in these spaces? So the website has been greatly reformed and most of what was posted was lost, but thanks to the Wayback Machine, we can still access the old site. <laughs> There's their slogan at the top. Tips, guides, references, and dictionaries, all for how to hypnotize yourself to be a pony. Now the way that this site worked is it was structured around providing files for people to hypnotize themselves and then talk about their experience with the the other people in the forum. So you have a section for pretty much every character. Here it says Rainbow Dash. For the Rainbow Dash in those who are Rainbow Dash, what is this? So here's a tab where you can see all of the journals people were posting. From Slowpoke to Speedster, a journey to awesomeness. From Earth to Equestria, becoming the new me. Now unfortunately none of these journals appear to have been archived since the site has been wiped out. The current website for Hypnoponies is pretty much just the files. One thing I do distinctly remember about reading all of these journals is that a lot of these people were in university. I know if you see a community like this, you might think it's just a bunch of other gullible 11 year olds, but surprisingly, no, the age of this community actually did skew upwards. So let's take a look at some guides that were posted back in the day telling you how to get started on this journey. Pony Hypnosis 101, a beginner's guide. And they've posted a rundown of what hypnosis is, what meditation is, visualization, trances, etc. And here's an interesting segment. How long will these files have effect on me? Depending on how long you've been listening to the files, how much you have been triggering or doing self-hypnosis or meditation outside of the sessions with the files, and your suggestibility you are. The long-term effects of the files can last from a couple of minutes to a lifetime. It also highly depends on the counter suggestions one receives throughout life. Sorry, thorough life that undo the suggestions given by the files. A jet fighter pilot will have a longer time to lose the effects of the Rainbow Dash file than a person that works as a librarian, and vice versa if we are talking about the Twilight Sparkle files. Okay, so I'm not bringing up the improper grammar to say, haha, stupid person can't word things right. You know, some people have a hard time typing, there's language barriers, there's, there's a whole bunch of things that could be going on here. But I will say though, these errors, right, do say that this was not exactly peer reviewed. This is just a person yapping. This did not go through multiple eyes before this person posted this. Like, I'm not exactly sure where they're getting the idea that certain people will have a longer time to lose effects of a certain file. I mean, it's not like you tested this. Did you do a controlled study? Probably not. You should have some credibility if you're basically trying to prescribe hypnosis to fix someone's life problems. What are the goals and purpose of pony hypnosis? The goal of pony hypnosis is the exploration and discovery of our true self by exploring its equestrian equivalent through the aid of hypnosis, meditation, and friendship. By exploring the archetype of various ponies, the similarities and differences with ourselves, we hope to learn more about ourselves with the goal of improving and self-discovery. 
Is this safe? Pony hypnosis is perfectly safe if you take great care in selecting the correct pony and do not make any decisions on starting this path impulsively. So let's take a look at their picking a pony guide. Unfortunately, the guide has absolutely been butchered in the formatting. Um, I think it's due to the Wayback Machine because I'm pretty sure I remember this looked a lot more polished, but let's take a look. Generally, there are various reasons ponies have for selecting their pony. By ponies, they mean you, like people, and then pony, they mean, you know, a pony. It's confusing, um, which I will outline below, as they may help give a general idea what to look for in your selection. Out of the selection below, only the first two are reasonable paths to take. The other three are mainly mentioned to steer ponies in the right direction again. Question, how does this person know what the reasonable paths are to take when clearly this entire site, this entire premise is not reasonable. It's just a bunch of pseudoscience garbage that's founded on absolutely nothing. I'm not following. For example, I idolize Twilight Sparkle because we share a love for science and our social awkwardness. Clearly not that much of a love for science, right? The I want to become more reason. An alternative way to pick a pony is not to look at the things you have in common, but the things you want to have in common, often out of admiration, but also recognition of personal flaws to work on. A shy pony may, for example, select Rainbow Dash for her assertiveness, and a pony with temper issues may pick Fluttershy. Working on self-improvement is a very positive use of the files. Great, you're recognizing your personal flaws. You want to embrace self-improvement. So I do have a question then. Why do the hypnosis files contain negative traits to give the listener? See, when I was researching for this video, I completely forgot until I came across a YouTube comment of somebody listening to one of the files being posted on YouTube 11 years ago where they quoted something that was said in the file. In the Twilight Sparkle file, where you're supposed to be really studious, intelligent, you like books, a quote in it is, Overly ambitious. You tend to let small things get the best of you. Especially since you pay great attention to detail. Strong attention to detail, not that bad. But letting small things get the best of you, that's not positive. It speaks of emotional imbalance. Negative traits were in pretty much every single file. They didn't necessarily say, here is a negative trait you will have, but they were written in a way where you were going to take on those negative traits if you believe this even works. And because of placebo effect, these files did work for many people. You like to feel validated, to always be the best, even if it drives you to the brink of insanity. And in the Fluttershy file, it says you have a meek voice and really puts that emphasis on you being very shy. And your voice becomes a softer barely audible and meek one. A perfectly fitting voice for a pony as shy as you. I know I have a YouTube channel, but I'm, I'm pretty shy in real life. There's nothing wrong with it, but it probably doesn't help you to focus on trying to become shy in life. It's easier to experience isolation and it's harder to put yourself out there. So let's take a look at the current website and see what files are up there. Looks like a cute little site and not like something that's trying to override your entire personality to think you're a pastel horse. Rainbow Dash, yada yada yada. Okay, it just says who Rainbow Dash is. And then you have all these file downloads on the side. There's different narrators and you can see that there's about four for each version. Some say induction, induction with background music, loopable, and loopable with background music. Now the induction files are the ones that are basically telling you you're getting deeper into a trance. As I count down from 10, you're feeling more and more relaxed. Those are the induction files. They have that lead in to the main pony part. The loopable ones are meant to be played overnight on repeat constantly that are just full of the pony affirmations. Like, you know, you, you feel your fingers joining together into hooves. Feel as your fingers and your toes slowly start to smooth together. In addition to the personality trait descriptions. You take pride in getting the grade, the praise of your mentors. Nothing else matters. And on each of these file tabs, we have important, emotional kernel panic warning. Before even starting pony hypnosis, please really think over it all and be 100% sure you know what you're getting into. Hypnosis is not a toy, nor a game. We want ponies to enjoy these files, but we also want them to be aware. All these warnings and disclaimers may be scary, but they're here for a few reasons. They're here to make you aware of what you're getting into. Also, to make sure you go about hypnosis in the safest way possible. 
and they say that emotional kernel panic happens if you listen to too many files at once. Like, you can't just be listening to a Fluttershy file for two days, and then switch to a Rainbow Dash one for a week, and then switch to Applejack for three days, and then go to Twilight for four days, and then... They say that if you keep doing that, it's gonna lead to emotional kernel panic. Now, the way they describe emotional kernel panic is that it's an identity confusion state. It sounds like something that might be real, right? It's not a psychological term. Though it looks like one, it looks pretty convincing. When you look up emotional kernel panic, the only things that pop up are Hypnopony's related posts. This is absolutely ridiculous, but what I found out was kernel panic is a term related to an error your PC is having. So that's how chronically online this was. They took a PC error and slapped the word emotional onto it to make it sound human and then started tossing this warning onto everything as if it was a genuine psychological term or like medical advisory when this really just means person PC error. So they have a file here that's supposed to help you prevent emotional kernel panic and reset the effects of the files you listen to. Generally, it should take a week or two, though depending on how different the two characters are, the strength of the achieved effects, and your suggestibility, shorter or longer times may be more fitting. Use at your own discretion. It's just wild that they have so many guarantees and so many promises and so many things they say are safe or unsafe you know, this sort of air of professionalism, when they have no idea what they're doing, right? Like, none of this is founded on anything. There's some people on the MLP forums who talked about their experience using the files. You know, some said they didn't really feel anything, others said they started walking on all fours and experienced something known as hooflock. Hooflock is um, a hypnopony's term where your hands, you can't feel your fingers anymore, and you, like, you can't move your fingers anymore, so it's locked into a fist. This is hoof lock. Oh no, guys, I'm experiencing hoof lock. I can't hold the water. Now let's talk about my experience using hypnoponies at the age of 11, okay? I was drawn to it because I was an 11 year old who really liked escaping into TV shows and movies. And I had just experienced a lot of bullying at one of the schools I moved to. So I came from that experience and I hated who I was. I felt rejected by my peers. So I wanted to escape and become something else. And at the time I found My Little Pony. It was like a band-aid on my personal issues. So I started listening to them to try to escape into being a character that I really admired. And I listened to the files, honestly, for a few months. I would listen to one for a week and then I got bored, so I'd switch to another and I'd listen to that one, then I'd get bored and you know, yada, 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 etc. I literally did every single one of the six. I would say long-term, it has not affected me, but during my time listening to them, of course it did. The research on hypnosis is very inconclusive. So I'm just telling my personal experience and it's that I don't know why, it affected me like this. It may be placebo effect, but I really did adopt those personality traits in the days after listening to the files. My light just went out, who cares? And I wasn't grounded in reality at all. I feel like this entire video is like one of those things where it's like, you would expect somebody would have to interrogate me to extract all of these confessions out of me. So I don't know why I'm putting it out there for thousands of people to see. Um, couldn't tell ya. Uh, <laughs> So what I'm about to say is gonna be even more embarrassing as if this entire confession hasn't been already embarrassing. In school, for math tests, I would try to listen to a Twilight Sparkle hypnosis before doing my tests at school. Or I would try to listen to my Rainbow Dash hypnosis if I knew I had a competitive swim meet coming up. Why am I saying all of this? Why? Whatever. I felt like it was the only way I could actually get things done. Whenever the effects of the file started fading, whenever I felt more of just who I am at my core start coming back in, I had to go listen to it in order to feel like I could cope. <laughs> it's embarrassing to talk about what I did at age 11. I feel really vulnerable talking about this, but the main takeaway is listen to that experience, right? I'm not the only person who experienced that, you know, given the amount of people who were talking about their logs and how they were frequently listening to the hypnosis. While the forms or whatnot may have said, it's not bad for you, I personally don't think it was psychologically healthy. At some point, they renamed the site Equestrian Souls and had a new site slogan that said, the path to Equestria. Why? This looks, it, you know, it kind of sounds culty, 
So Hypno Ponies was definitely um, an interesting community. You can kind of get a message from it about moderation and not taking things too far to the point where you're losing yourself in your favorite TV show. Or rather, it's losing itself in you? I don't know. But yeah, that's about all I have to say for this video. If you liked my content, feel free to leave a like or subscribe. Anyhow, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.